Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. I was just laughing because Hannah's been placing her handbags behind me, right? You can't see it, look. Me and Sapphire and I blend into each other and I'm right in front of one of the little handbags there. So <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. Right, now I think time or something has been conspiring against us because we were supposed to be, Helen and I were supposed to be working together several times and we had bad weather and then we had a pandemic. And we had, anyway, we're both here together. Before we start, before we start on today's show, it's all, I need to warn you, I've already got a bestseller and everything, so please be careful. I'm going to show you the website. If you've never been to Yarn Lane before, it is the only UK shopping channel dedicated to all things yarn, whether it be knitting or crochet or macrame or anything like that. So the website, www.yarnlane.com, you go there, you click on watch the live show. Oh, it's gone back to the little telly now. Right, okay. What we've done is we have put absolutely everything, not on pre-order, it's already... It's already, look, we've got a bestseller already. <laughs> bestseller already, and I haven't even shown it to you. So everything we've got available for this hour, knitting needles, bundles, kits, every single thing that we've got available in this hour is already there. So if you haven't got time to stick around, you want to watch us later, but you think, I need to buy it now, because this is what happens on Yarn Lane. We sometimes sell out before we've even got to stitching something. So... I've got knitting and I've got crochet today. So just what I'll do is let me go through what's here and then I'll say it, we'll say hello to Helen and we'll get on with the stitching and everything like that. So the first thing is this bag here, which is gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. Now it's knitted. You do not get your knitting needles with it, but you do get everything else. So you get the yarn. Well, I'll show you through the bag because it, look, 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 it's fully lined. It's got fully lined there. Right, let me show you what you get in your bag because when you order it, this is what will arrive at your house. So inside, now this, uh, well, I'll ask Hannah in. Let me go through the bundles and then I'll ask for that. Right, okay. Oh, it's from Happy Sheep Farmed in Pembrokeshire. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> right, okay, so you get the two skeins of the yarn there. Do we call these skeins? I'm sure we do. 100, Hanks, 100% 100 wool. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Woolly sheep designs this. Wool is made for, <gasps> no, and you've even got a picture of the sheep it's come from. Oh, so it's farmed in Pembrokeshire, spun in Yorkshire, and there's a picture of your sheep. Isn't that brilliant? So you get the, the hanks of yarn, wool. I can say wool, can't I? Then you get your lining fabric. Oh, have you all just looking at the sheep now? We're getting all excited. <laughs> then you get your lining. Then you get the lining fabric. Then you get the ribbon. Then you get the covered button and the instructions for the covered button and the instructions and the lovely little calico bag that's how it'll all come to you now look it's eco-conscious and ethical everything is upside down every single thing in there eco-conscious and ethical right so that's the blue one so if you want to make that now i do need to warn you and we'll talk more about this later the lining is different it's random you will get a beautiful beautiful blue lining but they are random but helen i'll, I'll describe that to you in a second say that again Oh, the lining's pre-sewn, and the lining's already pre-sewn for you in that one. So that's the blue one. That's the gorgeous blue one. Now, the best seller so far is this one. Now, I wonder what colour we call this one. Raspberry. It's called raspberry. what? Oh, it is raspberry. raspberry. It is raspberry. So again, you get your two hanks of wool. Now, what is this sheep any prettier? No. Nope. Same sheep. I've got sheep in the field behind my house, you <laughs> see, so I love them. Right, again, you've got your pre-sewn lining. Could be different. You get your button, you get your ribbon, and you get your instructions right way up, John. And that will make this. Gorgeous, isn't it? Isn't it lovely? This is knitting, remember? Now, if you've not... Oh, now, what size knitting needles? Four, four millimetre. How many? Four millimetre. Four millimetre needles. Yeah. Four millimetre needles, you need that. If you haven't got any, there's some on the website, but you might already have them if you're already a knitter. And we'll talk about that lovely stitch in a minute, because it's beautiful, isn't it? It's got like, I can see different stitches on there. But let's get on, let's get on, let's get on. So that's the raspberry one. Again, you get everything there. Your pre-sewn lining, which I can see is beautifully overlocked around the edge. Right, the purple is hanging behind me. Right, okay, where's the kit for my purple one? Did oh, you next kit? There. there. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, that's a lovely colour. Now, you're not going to see it. Let me get it for you. This is Hannah trying to do a bit of set decorating. I'm going to undo all the hard work now. <laughs> now, I'd say this was lovely amethyst colour, isn't it? Beautiful amethyst colour, that one. So, again, you, I won't get everything out, but you get the, the wool, you get the pre-sewn lining, you get the instructions, you get the button and the instructions to make the button, and you can create that beautiful purple one with that. What colour is this called? 
Purple. Oh, purple. <laughs> purple. <laughs> that one's called purple. <laughs> Be they're such lovely colours, aren't they? I'm going to show you everything that I've got because then you can start checking out and then we can enjoy the, the demonstration of things. Right. The do you want to go to that or that next? Yes, right, and this, now, before you start checking out on these, I need to explain this one. The bag itself just comes in one colourway, which is this beautiful, like, chocolate and chartreuse and cream and everything, all the things I'm now not allowed to eat. Um, beautiful, this is a crochet, crochet bag, right? Now, there are two options. You can get this option, first of all, which doesn't have the lining in, so it, it literally is the instructions. It's got a sewing pattern, but look, here's all your yarn. This is crochet, remember? Now, you do get a crochet hook in here, which is here. And all oh, these, these colours are just exquisite, aren't they? Are these from the same sheet? Or are these different? Yeah. Oh. Right, what's in here? The, um, the button. Button. And piping cord. And piping cord. Right, OK. So that is to make this with a sewing instruction for the lining. So you supply the lining to go in this one, right? You supply the lining to go in this one. Don't, we, we're going to come back to a demo of this, but I need to explain something to you, right? So that one is with, without the lining. However, we also do exactly the same kit for the crochet and everything like that. But look at this. This is how it arrives, right? Look, this has already got the lining made for you. So you still get the same yarn, oh sorry, you still get the same yarn, you still get the crochet hook, you still get the buttons and the everything there, and you get the instructions, but this one, this is the lining to go in the bag. So you sew that, so you don't have to worry about making a lining, finding lining fabric or anything, you literally, it arrives like this, but this is your lining to go inside this bag. So you finish, whether, whichever kit you buy, that's your finished bag, that's your finished crochet bag, but it's whether you buy it with a lining or without a lining. Okay? There are other knitting and crochet kits on the website. We just wanted to clarify those two. Right, okay. Do you want me to talk about these? And then we'll go and do some... Right, Helen, we're going to come straight to you now. How brilliant that we've eventually got together Finally. to do this. <laughs> so tell me, you're based in Hertfordshire. That's right. That's right. And you get your wool from? From my family's farm in Pembrokeshire. Oh, I didn't so know it was your family. It is, it is. So my aunt and uncle and cousin uh, have about, well, over 400 sheep <gasps> in Narbeth in Pembrokeshire. And so I've grown up always visiting their farm, seeing their sheep, seeing how you know well they're looked after. Just absolutely well, just love it. Yeah, exactly. But, but just the fact it's all part of the family is fantastic. Yes, um, yeah. Did you, did you, if you always grown up on farms, was some knitting something you've come to later on sort of it's, thing? Yeah, actually. Not later on, but you know Well, crochet and knitting, I think my mum taught me when I was a child. Right. But it wasn't until... I had children of my own and they were small that I started to pick up. I think up. that a lot of people do that. Yes. They get taught by the mum and it's like, oh, we don't want to do this. Yes. You know, well, so we've got other things to do. You know. Well, and, and it was such a great portable hobby. Yes. And, and so I got my mum to show me the basics again. And then from there... Was she a bit just, like, I've told you this once. No, 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 no. <laughs> she, she was great, very patient. And, yeah. uh, and sh just show me the basics. And then I think I picked up a, a, a crochet book called Cute and Easy Crochet, and I just loved it. And I became absolutely addicted. Oh. And I couldn't, st and, and it went from there. And But my frustration was that I couldn't find wool from British sheep to actually make the things that I wanted to make. Oh. There were brands out there that had kind of sheep colored wool, but it wasn't in the funky kind of colors that I wanted. And then I was like, Oh, but my aunt and uncle have got sheep. Yeah. I wonder how I could actually source the fleece from their sheep, get it spun, get it dyed into my favourite colours, and then woolly sheep. Okay, came so, about. so the, the sheep are all in Pembrokeshire at yes. your auntie and uncle's yes. farm. Yes. Then when you've taken it off the sheep, yes. where does it go then? Well, there are <laughs> there are not that many spinning mills in, in the UK, but they're um, I started off having wool spun in Cornwall. 
Right. So there's a spinning mill in Cornwall. Um, and then there are bigger spinning mills up in Yorkshire. So the wool that I've got with me today comes from oh, Yorkshire. Oh, so they're not, it's, it's all from different... Yeah, all, oh. well, because, because the sheep get shorn in June, right. around sort of when it starts to get a bit wet, better weather, yeah. and they need the, to get rid of their coats. So the, the sheep get shorn in June, and then the wool then goes to a spinning mill. But there is actually a fantastic spinning mill in Wales, okay. only 30 miles from the, the from from the farm. So the new yarn that I've got, which is undyed, which hopefully I'll bring to the next, next show, time, yeah. um, that has um, that was spun in Wales. Oh, fantastic! So, so yeah, so that really won't have travelled very far. No. But the 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 wool within these kits actually went up to Yorkshire. It's West Yorkshire, isn't it? Is it, it, Yorkshire? it isn't. No, it oh. isn't West Yorkshire spinners. It was the Halifax spinning mill. Oh. Okay, okay. So it was because they then spin small, smaller amounts, whereas yeah. West Yorkshire spinners, you know, huge, huge quantities yeah. of British wool pass through their spinning mill. Of course. So now, when does it get all these gorgeous colours? When does that happen? So then, oh, raspberry's flying out, by the way. So then, then it gets dyed in, um, y there are big dye wear factories, yeah. basically, also in Yorkshire. So it's oh, all British so it's made. All, well, how brilliant is that, uh, though? And the great thing is that I have actually been and visited all of these places. So I've been to the dye place, I've been to the spinning mill, so I can kind of know that it's from sheep all the way through to my knitting needles, where I make the design yeah. specifically for the wool. The thing is, though, it's your name. If it's your name yes, on a label, yeah, I'm yeah. the same as you. I want to know. I don't want people taking shortcuts. I want the best people to do all of it. Exactly. So the fact that you know all of the, yes. well, you know the, the sheep farmer, no, but you also yeah. know all of the people who are going to do your weaving and your dyeing and everything. Like, I think that's yeah. really important. Yeah, and then you can see their working conditions are good. Yes, and exactly. and it's, it's really important to me that it is an ethical business. So, so when did it um, go from being, oh, I'm going to do a bit of knitting while I've got children to like a, global empire global <laughs> <laughs> well well really uh, when i realized that i couldn't i couldn't actually source from my local wool shop the british wool that i wanted to um crochet mm -hmm. with so it was then well oh maybe i could develop this into a business and start to kind of link up all the different processes and launch my own uh, wool wool brand which um happened about mm, uh, nine years ago. Oh wow! So yeah, I've been. And you've not looked back since, have you? No, really? no, it's been fantastic. And of course, this year has been difficult because there's been no wool shows. No. There's been no um, wool shops open oh. to sell my wool to, or and also I can't teach, and that's been the biggest frustration. Well, it's is, just being with people, isn't yeah. it? Is that exactly me seeing you, seeing the customers face yeah. to face. M so do you have people. a shop where, in, where, where you live or well, how does it work? I do. I, I rent some space in a haberdashery shop oh, in, okay. in Hitchin. So right. yes, if, only, if anybody's passing Hitchin, do... What's the shop called? It's called The Haberdashery. Oh, okay, The Haberdashery in Hitchin. <laughs> in Hitchin. When, when the shop's... Oh, now, I presume Monday. then, next, on April the 12th. Yes, yes, oh. it's exciting, isn't and it? You, are you on the are you on the counter? No, I'm not. I'm I'm very much behind the scenes okay. and uh, my good friend Kim, she, she, she it's her. Business, yeah, yeah, so fantastic, yeah. right? Okay, should we do some knitting then? Yes. <laughs> the first one is knitting, isn't it? Yes. So, you said you needed size four needles, is that yes. right? Yes, so I think you, <clears throat> you you start off with the very first row, um, with three and a quarter um, needles, okay? So, that's just to make sure that the bottom of the bag sort of comes in at the bottom. So, when you start knitting, you're knitting from here, right? So, you? you're knitting tighter, right? And you start on the bottom and you make a front and a back, right? And, and the pattern. It's a bit different to um, a classic knitting pattern is in that it does have lots of photographs and it is written as a set of instructions. So any, any beginner knitter who has just learnt how to knit and purl would be able to make this pattern. Oh, okay. um, but also what's nice is for any experienced knitter, this is a, a, a really lovely project for... Um, just because it's moss stitch and it's, you know, it's... Oh, is that what they call this yes. stitch called moss stitch? Well, it's called moss stitch. It can also be called seed stitch. So I don't know if that's an American term right, okay. or... Um, but yes, it's the it's the same. So I thought I would just demonstrate no, no, no. What, what moss stitch yeah. is, what the stitch is. And if, um, 
if you can kind of have a look at the zoom in on the oh yeah um, hang on Emma just, just put it to your right yeah, a little bit there, there you're perfect so um so you can see that it's quite textured and the lovely thing about this wool is that it has brilliant stitch definition it's it's a very robust and kind of um hard wearing wool yes. that is uh, that is just great for well it feels like it's come off a sheep and it, I don't mean that it's rudely, very sheepy but it yes, is very yeah, sheepy isn't yeah. it? now um, you're knitting on circular needles does it have to be done on circular needles it doesn't have to be on circular needles I um, really love circular needles um, for straight knitting simply because I can then just move all my stitches to the cable and leave them there and there's no risk of them falling off the right, end okay, of the so needle. It's <laughs> so, so it's great when I'm transporting my knitting yeah. is that it's, it's great for sort of practical reasons. But y you, can, you, you can knit this bag on straight needles. Yeah. Um, you could even knit it in the round if you didn't want to do a front and a back. Okay. But you would just have to be mindful of um, the, the pattern because it is knit one, purl one and then the next row is purl one, knit one. I guess that, I knew you were gonna say that. Why yeah, that? You knit one, purl one is a classic um, um, the knitting um, thing. We've got, on the website, we've got, uh, we've got the, stra the straight uh, knitting needles and we've got uh, the circular knitting needles. Okay, so now do you start with moss stitch right from the very beginning? Right, from the, or yeah, like right that? from the very beginning. Right. There is a little bit of stocking stitch when you're finishing off or um, picking up the stitches for, for the edging around the top. But no, yes, because it, it goes a bit different. It is, top, so that's it, yeah. stocking stitch. But this is, um, this is moss stitch. Okay. So um, now you cast on for moss stitch you cast on an even number of stitches um, so that's re that's really important and i think when you do the the front or the back you um you you cast on 60 stitches i've right. got 20 stitches okay. here and i've done a few rows in and i can see it's it's really important to be able to sort of read your knitting and to see where the the bumps are which are like the purl stitches and then the, the V's behind um, that are the, the knit stitches. So I can see that I've ended my row and what's presenting me with is a, um, is a bump. Yeah. So that means that I need to do a knit stitch. So I'm gonna just knit the first stitch and there with a the knit stitch, I've got my yarn behind and I wrap the yarn round and take that stitch off and then bring the yarn to the front of my stitch and place the the needle in in the next stitch. Yeah, round. Um, so is that a pearl? That second yeah, one round the needle and off, yeah. and that's pearl, and then knit. And it is just you get into a sort of rhythm of pearl, and then you take your yarn back, knit. Can you do this while you're watching the forward? Telly? Well, I would say that I am much more a crocheter than a knitter. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I love the fact that I can do both, but knitting actually does involve concentrating <laughs> for me. Uh, and away. so <laughs> I, ha I have to look at my uh, I have to look at oh, my so needles. No but but I can I can watch I can watch the no, telly. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! But I can. <laughs> But I know a lot of knitters who would just go, oh, yes, look up. Look no, but up my, nan, and, this is why oh. my nan used to knit me the most incredible jumpers when I was a child. And she would literally she'd have a cigarette in her mouth. She'd be like this knitting and she'd be watching Coronation Street all at the same yeah. time. And, you'd think, and not even look at her hands. No, no, never look yeah. at her hands. I never seem to look at a pattern either, apart oh, from it was a, a difficult know. crossover neckline or something yes, like that. Yeah. Now, as you do knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, does it yep. look the same? This is me asking now as a beginner. Uh -huh. Does it look the same on both sides? It does. So do yeah. you need to remember which is your front side? No, because it, it, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter. The front and the back are completely the same. But what will same. one be the right starting with a bump and starting with a V? That's it. So now I've, to, now I've come to the end of the row. Yeah. And just get my other needle. So... And I ended with a with a pearl, so I'm going to start with a pearl. Oh, okay. okay so okay. yeah. So then it oh, yeah, would be. Oh, the other way around. So yeah. It? So um, because it's the even stitches, so pearl one and then knit one. Okay. So, and it's as simple as that. Okay. It's and is it is it so you you knit it knit, you knit how, how can you remember how many rows you have to knit? Don't worry if you don't, because it's all in the instructions. Yeah, it's all in the instructions, and it might be that you just have to measure. 
Right, okay. And so that, it, that um, you just, when you get to the point where you've done enough straight moss stitch, then you just... Um, just measure it with your tape yeah, measure. Yeah. Now, um, is, is there any excess wool in it? Just in case somebody ca gets carried away watching the telly and do two inches more, yeah. will there's, they be two inches short on the other side? No, don't worry. There's plenty of wool in the in the kit and you probably will have quite a lot left over. Oh, okay, so, uh, perfect, perfect. So perfect. yeah, if you get carried away, the, on the only downside is that if you do make it slightly bigger, your lining might not... Oh, um, yes, because the lining's already yeah. made. So the they? lining yeah, is already pre-sewn, and I'll just come to the end of this is one. That, is that something unusual for your patterns to have a pre-sewn lining? Because oh, I've been doing yarn lane now for a couple of months, and I don't, I've never yes. come across that. Yeah, now it is something that... Um, now, you're a sewer, aren't you? Yeah. And I, I'm, I can sew, and I've sewn some of these. I have to say my mum has done a lot of, um, oh. uh, a lot of the sewing, but... Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big sewer, and so there's a very there's a nice satisfying feeling for when you've got the finished knitted bag, and then having to get your sewing machine out and then find the right material. But th with this kit, you can just go right. The lining's already pre-sewn. You pop it in and hand sew it in, into place. Oh, you just whip it. just whip it into. Yeah. So it was kind of born out of the fact that I'm not a sewer. No, no. But I, I thought that this, I think that this would, have, would appeal. Be, you can't love every bit of it, can no, you? Really? No. And also, by the time I'd knitted that, I'd want them to finish it. And if you then, had, like you say, get your sewing machine out, find the right fabric. While yes. we're here, should we just talk about linings? Because they're, this one's got like a little ditzy print in it, but yes. they are yeah, so random, aren't they? They are, they are. So, um, but I do make sure that the linings match the, the wool. So I just brought with me a selection of, yeah. um, of different... And, and some of them are Liberty Emerald Print. Just come and from above, yeah. um, oh, they come from yeah, That's it, perfectly. Oh, so oh, they're all, but they're all beautiful, so aren't they, they? They will all. I'm sure that anybody that buys the kits will just love the the fabric. And and of course, if you if you are a sewer and you have got lots of fabric at home, you can use the fabric um, that's in the kit as a as a template, as a template yeah. and make your own so and also having the um having the pre-sewn um lining means that when while you're knitting you can actually measure it against oh yeah you know so as you're knitting you can sort of say right i've got you know i've got this far on my knitting yeah, i've got this much brilliant. more to do so um so yeah and then it, it comes with a um self-cover button yes and a little square of fabric so that you and the instructions on how to cover the and button. the self-cover is the same as the lining yeah, is it? yeah, yeah so yeah. that so that it matches okay i need to warn you we're on single figures in raspberry Ex exactly the same amount have all ch oh no people must just out now raspberry's taken over but what we were about to say was they were level pegging but for some reason raspberry had loads in basket so you've obviously started checking out can i just ask very quickly then so when you get to here i'm not going to pretend i know about knitting but it goes uh -huh. into a it goes into a curve it, it does and so what you do is once you've done the the front and the back you put all your stitches onto waste yarn so you you feed it you take your needles out then what you do is you join the um, the half the stitches from the front to half the stitches from the back. Oh. You pick up those stitches and then you do the shaping. Got it. So it is, it is and it's all explained. Yeah, the, no, 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 I understand it now. So you basically, you're knitting, you're knitting this and then suddenly yeah. you're knitting That's that right. to, to do the point, to point, exactly. the point there. And then you carry on for the strap. So you just carry oh, that's on. Not, that's not separate. No, it's not separate. So it's all knitted in one piece from oh, there. Oh, wow. And all you have to do is then do the sewing up of the seams. So now, seams. I know you said for people who might not have started, is this, is this um, a beginner? Like if you're just new to knitting or do you need to be a, a confident beginner, do you think? No, I think if you are, a com if, if you've been shown the basics and you can knit and purl, you can then make that's this. yes, and Perfect. I think the only other um, side is it, the other, only bit is the decreasing, which is knit two together, and that's where you put in your stitch, where where you're putting your needles into two stitches. Which sounds a bit obvious. That sounds obvious. It's obvious. <laughs> it is obvious. And, and I'm not a knitter. But no, you know. but it's that easy. It's that easy. Knit, just knit two together. So there's a bit of decreasing, 
and um, and then it's just a knit stitch and a purl stitch. And is there anything inside this handle? Yes, yeah, so the handle, to stop it from stretching, because yeah. obviously you're going to be putting your... Or, yeah, you, and if you add the rain, it's yes, going to get like yeah. a swimming costume. Well, exactly. So it's got, um, and that's also in the kit, is you described oh, that's what the as the ribbon, the ribbon, but I couldn't actually, figure out what it's Yeah, it's actually made from uh, blackout lining. So it's really, really strong and won't, won't stretch. Oh, perfect. I've got a quick question. Is it a question or comment? Question on the bottom of the screen. Here we go. Uh, hi, all. This may be a silly question. There's no such thing as a silly question. Huh? Uh, but do you sew the lining in the yarn or cotton? No, that's not a silly question no, at all. It, I'd have to ask yeah, that. no, it's a good good question because I would say, um, as, I, as explained, I'm not a sewer, but uh, I would hand sew it in with your own um, thread. Sewing thread. Sewing yeah. thread. Sewing thread and just catch the, the edge of the, um, turn over the edge, catch it and just this, hand yeah. sew it all in all, all round with, with cotton thread. Yes. Not with the yarn. Because the yarn would be too thick. The yarn would be too thick for the lining, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking about it. But on the strap, you actually do so. You can sew that up with, with the, the wool. Yarn. With the yeah. wool. Perfect. That's fantastic. So, do you want me to recap anything on there, Hannah? Before I move on to my next um, bit of goodies. Okay, make your mind up, colourway. But the raspberry one is absolutely flying out now. Right. Okay. So then we're moving on to this, this, yes. this, this yes. crossbody bag, crossbody bag. Right, so this one here is called Frosty Blue. Let me get my glasses, I'm getting old. <laughs> this is again knitting, 100% British wool, knitting pattern, piping cord, and self covered button. So, oh, that's nice. Oh, fewer than 20 already. Frosty Blue is the name of the yarn. So now, again, this is 100% British wool. Uh, 225, uh, there's no picture of the sheep on this one. It'll be a happy sheet though, this comes. Probably. They all sound happy. Yeah. So all <laughs> of your, does all of your yarn come from your uncle and auntie? No, that is from the West Yorkshire Spinner. Oh, oh yes, so, I've yeah. just the, seen that. Yeah, that's this is the, um, yeah, colour lab. Yeah. So these are reared, sheared and spun in Britain. So in here you get the yarn, you get the piping corn, corn, piping corn, <laughs> corn, <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, cover button and your instructions. Now this is knitted again, so there's no knitting needles for this one. So that would make this one. How does, it, how does it know when to change? I don't understand. It's a variegated wool, but how does it know when to change colour? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Why is it made stripes clever. and not zigzags? I know. It's clever. Oh, it's clever. It's That's just good. clever. Have they I dyed don't know. it? Yes, they've dyed it. Exactly. No. Yes, yeah, yeah. No. Make, so that stripes. has been dyed so that you do get definite yes, stripes. Yeah. So you're not having to change colour. You're not having all the extra ends to sew in. It just, the yarn is magic. It just does But you'd it think with this variegated, you'd get a bit of blue and then it would suddenly turn to the next colour and, turn, yes, and you'd have a yeah. zigzaggy chevron. No, pattern. no, but it's just, it's seamless. It's, uh, yeah. How it's brilliant. Good. Right. Then we also have that in this gorgeous colourway here. Yeah. Which I'll just show. It's the same bag, same thing. Okay. Oh, and these are lined as well. They don't come with the lining. Okay, that's fine. No, no, that's fine. So mm -hmm. you put your own lining in here. But now, is there a pattern for the lining yes. in the pattern? Yeah. That's There's a okay. template. Okay, so this I've got the, the, the yarn in here. Sorry, it's a bit messy. I was doing a bit knitting earlier. So again, that's been, that's a lovely colour. What's the colour is this called? Hannah? Purple rain. Purple? Purple rain. Purple rain. <gasps> yeah. I would sing, but I'm not in the mood. <laughs> um, covered button. Does the cover button come yes, in? Yes, yeah. But the fabric, obviously yeah. you'll use the fabric that you yeah. want to cut. That's beautiful. Oh, and I also have just noticed the strap as well. Let me just push that back in there when I do knitting later. Now that, is that knitting? Yeah. And that looks like the thing we used to do when we were little and go like that with the cord. Yeah. Anyway. French knitting. <laughs> okay, so that's that colour, purple rain. And then the other one is the pale grey, which you've got over yes. there. Oh, it's not pale grey, yeah. lovely grey colour. This is the grey that I was called very on trend grey, this one. Because everything, if you look in any designer boutique, mm. it's that colour, isn't it, sort of thing. Um, what colour is this one then? Silver grey, like my hair. So again, you get your button, your piping cord, the instructions, you need your own knitting needles, and this is your yarn. But again, it's 100%, I presume it's 100%, is it? 100 grams. 100% British wool in there. So, and then that will make, or oh, you've got it there, the green. Yeah. So you have to supply your own lining and your own covered button fabric. The covered button is in there, but that's up to you to, to what you use. And the pattern for the lining is in with the pattern. Right. That's so what do you like to show us on this? Not, you're not going to do this. You're not going to do finger no, knitting. No, no. Well, I'm not going to do finger knitting, but I just wanted to um, show. So I have done the, um, 
I've knitted one and I've got to the point where I am now um, want to sew up and I just wanted to show you what was inside the inside the strap so the kit comes with a piping cord and in order to keep it into in place I have just tacked it in place right. with um, with thread right and then what you have to do is you have to sew the two sides together using mattress stitch and mattress stitch is um, it's fantastic because okay, you, non -sewer, show us yeah, the you can't actually see the seam. So it no, does, that's why it, I thought yeah, it was. That's why it, I thought it was there. It's so clever because it's brought together the two sides, and um, mattress stitch is a is a great is, is a great thing to, um, that knitters uh, use to 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 make it look seamless. Yeah. Now somebody mentioned mattress stitch the other day, and when they started sewing it, I went, "Oh, that's a." And we, as a sewer, right. I think we have a different name okay. for it, but I can't remember okay. what it so I'll let you go. And then, can I ask a quick question before you do yes. it then? So when you knit the bag, yeah. do you carry on knitting? Is this part of it or do you knit this separately? So you, you knit the, so you, you knit actually the front and back together. Right. And uh, in one sort of rectangular shape. And again, the, the patterns have got um, lots of photographs. So you, you, you can just follow this step yeah, by perfect. step. Um, so and then again you put exactly the same as the moss stitch bag you, oh, you do it that way do yeah. halfway and then what you do call it put it on waist yarn on waist yarn so or yeah. on um what are they called stitch are they the big the big like look like kilt pins those yes things. exactly yeah. Yeah, so those on the website so you can put them on there yeah. um and then you do what you you do exactly the same thing yeah. you you knit this bit and you Creating. decrease and then you carry on knitting until the length of your strap and I noticed on if I was making a bag for you John I would make the handle longer it's because I've got because, a belly you no see. no it's because I'm so short that oh. I've made now is, I've there, made is there yarn me, in there so. to be able to make it longer yes then? but yes. how much it, piping cord and you in get? fact for, for you get piping cord um the the pattern is um for 120 meter length so centimeter length yeah, yeah centi meters. Centi that'd be a very long Centimeters. Oh, dragging oh. on the floor yes, behind it would be. 20 meters. So yeah, 100, 120 hundred and twenty centimeters. centimeters. Okay. And I think I've made my strap a meter. Well, so, I was gonna say, yeah, so, so yeah. 120 would be fine for me, you know. And, and I have knitted this whole bag yeah. and there's this much wool left. Oh, you can almost so, make another one. So you can almost make another one. I think when I weighed it, it was about forty five grams left. You could make a little coin purse. You could <coughs> you could or you could you know, you could make it with um, you know stripes you could add a stripe of a different yarn oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah you could definitely make two so okay um, so you've done that and then you've tacked your piping cord yeah into, into the, place yeah and and then ready to do some mattress stitching um together now the the great thing about mattress stitch is if you look really carefully you'll see that these are kind of rows of v stitches uh -huh. and that's the sort of um edges that you want to bring together now in between those stitches the v's is like a bar i don't mm -hmm. know if you can see yeah that. no it's perfect you can see, see the that, bar yeah. so you put your um wool needle underneath the bar on one side and you pull that over and then you find the bar on the other side and you pop that they're more fingers and thumbs now and you follow the follow follow the line along of um, yeah the edge of the the V's. So you're and then just you come to the, the other side. Together. Yes, you bring the edges together, and you're going in between to find that bar. Yeah. And you keep crisscrossing over, sort of creating a ladder effect. That's what I was going to say. We call it ladder stitch. Ah, there you go. And you can do that quite loosely because yeah. you don't actually need to pull it tight as you go. You can because you can pull it tight later on. Yeah, when you yeah. Around, so you just do a few. Well, I never. So yeah, you make that kind of ladder, going backwards and forwards from one side to the next, and then when you've got a few, mm -hmm. you can then pull it tight, and it is like magic. It, it is just magic. closes closes that up brings it together and then you just do the next bit perfect so 
So yeah, so that's just a little demonstration on on how to do mattress stitch. What what um what knitting do I do on this? Because that one's per knit one pearl one. What's this? Yeah, so this is stocking stitch. This is stocking stitch. So that's where one row is knit and then turn, and the next row is is pearl. Isn't and that you'll funny see, how how yeah. they look completely different? You're yeah. using the and same it, stitch. Exactly the same stitch, but the as I was saying before, you kind of learn to read your stitches that the, the V's of the knit stitch then lay flat on the front and the bumps of the purl stitches are on the wrong side. OK, so, so this means you have got a right and a wrong you side have, on this you one. You have. So the smooth side of stocking stitch is the right side and then you've got the bumpy side. Um, um, would, could you, you can see could that. you make it with the bumpy side out? You could, you could, and I oh, think... Obviously, not, that's not a good idea. I can tell well, by the face. No, no, no. Well, you, can, you could, because it's called reverse stocking stitch. So, so there, it, there are patterns that you can have reverse stocking stitch, and so you get the, the bumpy side right. as a design feature. Yeah, 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 as yeah, a design yeah, design feature. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so, but the, these bags, I, I think, are just brilliant for just chucking on. You've got your, um, your mobile phone and... You know, for a party or whatever, you just have a few things. Mask. Keys, mask, yeah, a few bits and pieces. Ideal just to chuck across your, your body and, and go. Uh, and yeah, go. If you go for a dog really walk, good. you make one for your yeah. poo bags and things. And uh, Or it's like, if I don't have pockets, um, I love having this just on all the time. Yeah, but it's safe mo- as well. But it's also safe because yes. you've got it cross body. You, yeah, you've well. got the security feature as well. So Purple rain is way in the lead. Oh well, it's beautiful. It is but, uh, I, really no, you lovely. See, I thought this one would. I thought this one would win. Right. So this is purple rain. I'm only going to show you the finished thing. This is purple rain. Now remember, there's a pattern for the lining, but you need to play your own lining. And there is a covered button in there. Oh, sorry, I'll turn it the right way. There is a covered button in there, but you need to. I love the way you. Fu- Did you make this one? Yes. Fussy cutted the little flamingo on there. But <laughs> you get the covered button, but you just have to choose your fabric to go on there. Now, can you cover a button with knitting? Yes, of course you can. So you could make you could, knit you yourself could, a little square. You could, uh, yeah, and you could because the um, the button comes with an adjustable back yeah, yeah. to sort of keep it all in place. Mm-hmm. You could you could knit yourself. Well, it's just fabric. At the end of yeah, the day, oh yes, you just yeah. knitted the fabric instead of. Um, so that's purple rain, the one in most most in the lead. Then so there's this one. What's this one called again? Frosty, Frosty blues. Yeah. You see, I th- isn't that funny? That's the one I love. But maybe because it just goes with the shirt away today. But it's just I love the colours in there. And then the one you've got yeah. is just called silver, gr- silver grey. Yeah. Now, shall I show you? Now you. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. I'm... You you mentioned the um, French knitting. You know, on the dolly. Yes. Well, there is a way of doing a big cord, and it's called an I cord, um, on um, with double pointed needles. So I just wanted to show you because these bags all have uh, an eye cord that um, that oh, finishes that goes off, round that goes thing, round yes. the, and so that's knitted as well. So just, um, yeah, just thought I would demonstrate yeah, how do, to do, do uh, yeah. an eye cord. So with, um, you just cast on three stitches. Do we have to, do they have to be double ended? I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it in grey because that's not showing up against okay. the. Okay, um, oh, yeah. how many needles. times have you been doing telly recently, Miss I know. But... Well, like, it's kind oh, of grey nice. gray needles, yeah. so yeah, we'll do it in pink and uh, if I can find the end, that's it. That's right. not a colour we've got available today, just so you know. No, it's just from my, from my stash. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, right, so I've just made a, a slip knot and put that loop on the, uh, on my needle. Um, so these are, um, these are actually three and a half millimetre um, double pointed needles. Um, and so I'm going to just cast on. Let me move those out of the way. Now, a quick question. When my nan used to knit, she yep. at the end of her knitting needles, like a little plastic square and it had the number on it. Yep. That can't have been millimetres because we didn't have millimetres in those no, days. No, so there were old fashioned uh, numbers on the end. Oh, I don't, uh, yeah. But then, so they're, we don't, we all, don't know yeah. that they were, they're not the same. So if you find old fashioned needles in a second hand shop, yeah. they're not necessarily the number that we would knit with today. No, no, but there are loads of um, conversion charts yeah, yeah. online. So, um, so I, seem to be, I remember her being nines and tens, but they weren't. They made just normal jumpers, so maybe that was the yeah, old fashioned. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Right. So I've got three. So I've got three um, stitches. I've just cast on three stitches, and with an eye cord, all you do is knit. You don't need to do any purl stitches. So I'm going to knit 
th these three stitches. Mm -hmm. So knit in three and coming to the end of the row. Now, normally, if you were working in rows, you would turn oh, your man. needle, yeah. but with an I cord, you slide those stitches oh. to the other end right, which of is why your you need to, yeah, yeah. double pointed needle. And then the wool that is at the back, you pull over to the side. And this then gets sort of lost in the cord itself. Right. So then I'm going to knit three stitches. This is my kind of knitting, just three stitches. Three stitches, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then slide those to the end, How? pull the yarn across. And that's going to create a... And that will create a, an eye cord. Who on earth discovered that? I Do you know, know what I mean? It's, it's like... Yeah, it's magic. It's, uh, yeah. And you just keep going until the length of cord that you want. And is it making a, a tube then? It's then making a tube because when you're pulling and you pull quite tight when yeah. you when you do your first stitch, so you move it to the end and then you pull that tight and that closes up the back of the cord. How clever. Yeah, no, it's really clever. So if you're making a kind of cardi or something like that and you wanted buttons, you could make button loops for you like could. that too? Yeah. Oh, look, it's, so it's there's the, oh. there, and, and it's quick because you've only got the three stitches. And how do you fin how do you finish off? I, I, so most of them three. The most of them three stitches. Most or? most eye cords are probably three or maximum five because you you do you don't need too many stitches, no. um, and then you would just cast off in the normal way. Normal so way. yeah, you would just go round, knit two stitches. This is how I I cast off. Knit yeah. two stitches, pass the stitch over knit the next and then pass that stitch over and you've got one loop How brilliant. and then, and then you can just, just then you can just break the yarn and pass that through and make a knot and uh, yeah you've made just a little How a little eye cord brilliant. and the back is the back is a series of v's so just the same as the mattress stitch yeah. uh, did it's seamless so yeah, it's, it's and what's that clever. called? It's called an I cord. I cord. An I cord. And I've seen people do really long I cords and and have wire through it, so you can then do I cord letters, or you know. Oh. So yeah, you could you could actually uh, hand sew the I cord onto like if you wanted to. Oh, to decorate the front to, of something. Yeah, to do decorating. So it's got oh. different you know different things you can do with an I cord. Brilliant. Right, there let's go. go to crochet now. Let's go to crochet. So the two bundles I had are, it's to make this, they're both in the same colourway, this gorgeous mint and chocolate and cream. The one with the lining, which I would, I agree, the one with the lining is the most popular, right? Okay, so what you get is, is that's in this one. The one with the lining is this is how it, yours will arrive. Oh, oh no, I've just dropped balls all on the floor. <laughs> right, this is how yours will arrive. So it comes in there. With the right amount of balls, we'll check before it is sent out to you. It does come with a crochet hook. Now, where's this? Because this hasn't got... That has, so, yeah, so I've wound all of these balls. I know. Oh, my God. So, what? yeah, no, I, I have got an electric ball winder. So oh, got, OK. So you haven't uh, sat there in front of the telly. Going. No, so they come in skeins. Right. And I've got a, a Swift, which I think you had for oh, sale. Oh, was that show yeah. that I wasn't allowed to do and they said they took it off me and it was like winding <laughs> balls and everything like that, yeah. Yeah, so I, I've got the Swift that I put out and then I wind up all the balls. So in this kit is a combination of the, the white is from my aunt's sheep. Yes. And the um, and the grey and the oh and the green is from uh, from my um, my family's sheep. Yeah. Um, and then the the grey and the sort of chocolate brown that comes from West Yorkshire spinners and that's from a different breed of sheep called a Jacob sheep. Right. Okay. And they've got big horns. Because what's his name? Uh, Matt Baker. Yes. Who did the one show he i was listening to a thing on the radio of him he's got he's done a tv series but i haven't seen it but he's gone yeah. to his fam and they do yes, sheep don't they because yeah. his mom he went there because his mum got knocked over on the sheep and had a bad damage to her leg and he went he and his family hole went up and, and they've yeah. changed the whole perspective of the farm because it the sheep that they were breeding weren't the right sheep for what they wanted to do and everything yeah but but, that's it and and i think in this country there are uh, 90 different breeds of sheep you know well oh, yeah, nearly 90 yeah. Um, different breeds of sheep. And each sheep has different properties. Yeah, so yes. it has, has a different, so their, their wool from their 
if it was spun, it would have a different feel. So, for example, my um, my cousin has mainly Paul Dorsets and Ryland sheep, oh. and they make the very white. So the 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 fleece then comes out very very white. Oh, okay. which the ones is, in the field behind me aren't white. Are they not? <laughs> no. Whereas um, you get other sheep, which uh, is is perhaps better for carpets yeah. or. And then you get uh, a sheep called the Blue Face Lester. Which that, I've heard a lot about. That is like the, the merino equivalent. I was going to say, very soft. merino in Spain, aren't they? And they're specially bred just for their... Yeah, they, yeah. they have very delicate... They have delicate feet, so they don't like it in Britain. Oh, it's, okay. it's too oh, rainy and yeah. muddy. So. Also, they, I, I don't, not that I'm a vegetarian, <laughs> so I don't eat meat or anything, but a merino lamb, you could never eat a merino lamb because the meat isn't... No, no. So they, they are just bred for their wool. For their wool. For their wool. Good, I'm quite, I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> right, okay. So the most popular one is the one that you get. So you automatically get the lining already made to go inside the bag. It's crochet this time, a crochet bag. You do get the crochet hook, you do get the instructions, you get the button. Everything everything you need is in that little calico bag there. And that is um, $44.99. You can also buy it if you want to make your own lining. I do have a kit here. Exactly the same yarn, exactly the same instructions, exactly the same everything, but you don't get a lining with this one. But you do get instructions how to make the lining to go in it. Yeah, so, okay. so my very good friend, uh, Jane Hickman, who has, um, she's a very talented sewer. She's got a business called Garden in Witch Designs. She has made these calico bag linings for me. Oh. And because I thought, well, and obviously they're quite time consuming to make, um, I was limited on how many I could bring. Right. But because there's a nice crossover between um, Yarn Lane and Sewing Street, I'm sure that a lot of people that are watching this show are talented yes. sewers too yeah. and would look at, and Jane has written the instructions. So she's written her instructions up as a sewing pattern for how to actually make it. So yeah. I'm sure that anybody that looked at her pattern would make it would, would make we'll it make, easy, yes, exactly, easily. Yeah. So it's got but it's got little pockets and in and everything. I need to point out it's not just a bucket of calico. It's got really lovely pockets. Everything. Right, we need to get on. Okay. This is crochet, isn't it? So this is crochet, and um, so it is made up. So the um, the hexagon handbag is made up of thirteen hexagons, right? Which are then crocheted together. Not are they, sewn are they together. Gran, are they like granny squares? They're like granny squares. They're even easier than granny squares. Oh, okay. Okay, because they are mainly you make it as a circle. So you start off with a circle. Right. And then the last round of the hexagon, you then add the corners. Oh, I see. So what I thought I would do is show you how to do the first two rounds of the circle yep. within the hexagon, and then. How to do add the, the and then do the um, do the corners bit. Yeah. But yes, if you can do a granny square, this is a really but you easy have, but pattern. But granny squares, you have to square off corners and everything. Whereas this, you must just be keep going round and round and round. Yes, yeah. It, so I I often say with mandalas as well that if you can make a granny square, mandalas and these hexagons are even easier because you don't have to have a, you don't have to worry about the corners. Yeah. Um, so right, we're going to start with a slip knot. On my hook. Yeah. I have to switch my knitting brain yes, off. This sorry. is the thing because um, quite often when I teach um, knitters to crochet, it's the holding the, the hook. Obviously, with knitting, you've got two needles. Mm -hmm. With crochet, you've only got one hook. And um, yeah, so I'm sure I've been talking about hooks when I should have been talking about needles, but anyway. Um, so when um, so I hold my um, yarn when I'm crocheting in my left hand because I'm right-handed. Okay. And so I hold my hook in my right hand, just um, like I am throwing a dart or, you know. <laughs> Down uh, the pub. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we can go to the yeah, pub, throw yeah, darts. Yeah, um, or, or, right, you know, holding yeah. a pencil. So, and I'm wrapping the yarn just to get the tension around my little finger. And then I pass my um, yarn. Are we chaining up in the air? And we're chaining, well, no. Oh. I know some people have their fingers up in the air. Yeah. I'm not one of those. Okay. I, I keep my oh, I yarn. Thought, I thought that's what a chain was. Oh, sorry. Well, I keep my yarn over and I'm going to chain. So I'm going to go under the yarn yeah. and slide it through the loop that's okay. on my hook. And uh, it starts with four chains. Right. Two, three, four. It's a three millimeter crochet hook that I'm using, which is probably a very small hook for a double knit yarn 
but you want it to be quite a tight stitch. Okay. And the, so the, the crochet hook comes in it, so? The crochet hook does come in it. So then, um, so then I want to make it into a circle, so I'm going to put my hook into that first chain stitch mm -hmm. that I made, yarn around the hook and pull through both loops on my hook. And then I've got a, a ring in the middle of which I'm going to be putting my stitches. So I start off again, three chains, one, two, three, and now I need to make 11. There's a lot of maths, a yeah. lot of counting it's all in written, crochet. It? It's all written yes, down. it's all written down. So I'm going to do 11 uh, treble crochet stitches, but in the um, but this the three chains I've just made is the equivalent of one treble. So you'll end up with 12 trebles, and of course and we're doing UK, hexagons. UK. UK, yeah. yes, yeah. So a treble crochet stitch, a UK treble crochet stitch, and the patterns are all in the UK terminology. Go yarn around the hook into the middle of the, of the ring that I've just made, catch the yarn from behind, pull through. I've got three loops on my hook. Yarn around the hook, pull through two, yarn around the hook and pull through two, and that's a UK treble mm -hmm. crochet stitch. So then we carry on and um, and I've pulled my wool from the middle, so it's a bit stick, sticky. Right. Yeah, so the reason why we start off with the 12 treble crochet stitches in the middle, and I know I'm going quick, but... Um, no, 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 it's fine, uh, thanks. We're um, running out of time. Yeah. ...is uh, because we're doing a hexagon, and obviously hexagons have got six sides, and so there's that. There's the maths. Oh, so OK. You, everything has to be sort of divisible, divisible by, yeah. um, by six. So we're just doing 12 treble, I'm saying just, we, 12 treble stitch, 12 treble. <laughs> that's right, that's yeah. right. And so I'm going to count after this one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I count out loud. So, um, yeah. and you can count in two ways with treble uh, crochet stitches. You can count the posts or you can count the Vs. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I've got right the way around okay. to the beginning and then I make a slip stitch. Uh, single figures on the bag with the lining, and what was the one with what without? Oh, the other one's going through, so we can see. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that finishes off round one right. of the hexagon, and I've just done a slip stitch. Now I don't ever break the yarn at that point. Yeah. I then go to make a, uh, a oh, just chain. Oh, you're going to change. I'm going to change colour. Yeah. Four minutes. Just okay. So you know. Right. Then what I'll do is I'll just demonstrate the the next stitch, which is a um, uh, a two treble cluster stitch. Okay. So and then I'm just cutting the yarn at the top. And because I made a, uh, a chain, I can then pull that out and it makes yeah. a knot. So then joining the next colour, I'm just going to put my hook in between the treble crochet stitch, catch the yarn and pull it through. And then just carry on. And then, and then just carry okay. on. So that's how to join. You don't do any slip stitches or anything like that. You just literally no. push it through and start again. So I'll show you this. Um, so I'll show you the, the two treble cluster uh -huh. stitch. So I've just done one starting stitch. Yarn around the hook, go in between the stitches, catch the yarn, three loops on my hook, yeah. yarn around the hook, pull through two. Now, if I was finishing this treble crochet stitch, I would then go yarn do, around the yeah. hook and pull through pull those through. two. But I'm not. I'm going to do... A special stitch, mm -hmm. which means I'm going to start the next one. Yarn around the hook, in between the stitches, pull through four loops on my hook, yeah. and then pull through two, yeah. and I've got three loops on my hook, and then I'm going to pull through all three loops. Okay. And, and that, that's cool. And that's a two treble cluster stitch. Okay. And that then forms, if you carry on, you can you like can petals. Yeah, yeah. You can go all the way around and that completes your second round. Okay. And the instructions tell you all how to do this. Plus, also, there is a handy chart in the um, oh, yeah, in brilliant. the kit, which yeah. then means that you can sort of match your what you've been crocheting against your chart, and you can then compare to see how many sets of three trebles you've done, and does it look exactly? It should sort of line line up. Okay, I've got a challenge, Helen, now. I've got a minute and a half to show minute you and a half. Mi <laughs> minute and a half. Well, all, well, what I will show you now is the... Um, so, with the, with the final round, instead of going in between the treble crochet stitches, you're actually going to be crocheting into the tops of the stitches, so underneath the Vs. So, again, I'm just going to start 
with a standing treble. Yarn. Right. I've made a slip knot and I'm wrapping the yarn around and then I'm going into the stitch, catching the yarn. Because what you will do is you will do seven treble crochet stitches. Sorry, this is... Oh. Now it's not the time Trippy. to get stuck. No, no, right. So I'm just going to go, so that's my first treble. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch and do two more. And then I'll show you how to do a corner. Okay. So into the next stitch, you're going to do two treble crochet stitches and then a chain all into the same stitch. So I've done two trebles. Yeah. I'll do a chain. And then I'm going to go back into that same stitch to do two more trebles. And so that's what makes the corner of the hexagon. So you've got, again, the instructions all tell you how to do that. And it just makes that. So it makes the a corner. And then how far do you go down to until your next corner? And then you carry on all the way around by doing seven trebles. And then in the, the eighth stitch, you've then got two trebles, a chain and two trebles. Perfect. Yarn Lady's back on Friday with Catherine Wright doing knitting. Thank you so much. I think this should be, uh, we should have two hours. Thank you for your company. We have to go now. Uh, it's been brilliant. See you soon.